Today on The Hookup, we're gonna dive back into Node-RED and check out two extremely useful node types that you might not be using yet. This is the third installment of my Mastering Node-RED series. If you haven't seen episode one, where I describe the terminology and basic concepts of Node-RED, I'd highly recommend that you watch that video first. Today, we're gonna to focus on two specific node types that have hundreds of applications. A built-in node called the Trigger node and a Home Assistant specific node called Events All. Node-RED is great for creating automations that respond immediately to changes in state in Home Assistant, but it isn't always easy to program it to do things later based on those changes. In the Home Assistant automation system, there's an option to say that an entity needs to have been on for a specific amount of time before your automation should be triggered, but it's not quite as easy to do that in Node-RED. To accomplish this task in Node-RED, we're gonna use the Trigger node. The Trigger node has three basic settings. The first setting is the message to immediately send. It has the same plethora of options for setting different message types as the change node. Alternatively, it can also just send the current payload, or it could even send nothing. The second setting is what to do after sending the immediate message. You've got three options. One is to wait to be reset, which means it won't send another message no matter how many messages enter the node until it gets a specific payload of message.reset or a message payload that you choose. Another option is to resend the same message every X amount of time until the node is reset using the same methods as before. The last option, and the one I find the most useful, is the one where you send a different message after a specific amount of time. This message can be canceled by resetting the node, again, using the same method as before. One common request for a Node-RED flow was motion-triggered lights. This is the sequence that I use to accomplish this in Node-RED. We'll start out with a Home Assistant event state node for the motion detection. No special settings in this node. Then, we'll bring it into a switch node that will route the messages based on motion equals true or motion equals false. My motion detector is set up as a sensor instead of as a binary sensor, so you may need to change this to on or off rather than true or false. If motion is true, it sends the message to turn on the lights using a Home Assistant call services node. Once the sensor sends the motion equals false message, it enters this trigger node, which will initially send nothing, and then after a specific period of time, it will turn the light off using a call services node. The important thing here is that if at any time during the waiting period motion is detected again, it will send the message of true to the trigger node, which will then reset that node, preventing the light from being turned off. This means that the light will turn on immediately when there's motion, but it will only turn off when no motion has been detected for a specific period of time. Many, many trigger nodes control my LED classroom bell timer. Each one sends the payload for the specific number of minutes for the current period, and then after that many minutes, it sends on a payload of next, which feeds into a switch node to activate the next trigger node, which does the same thing for a different amount of time. The nice thing about using trigger nodes for this is that if the administration decides to throw us a curveball and makes a last minute custom schedule, I can send a custom timer through Home Assistant and it will clear the other trigger nodes, which then clears any previous schedule. A similar sequence to the motion trigger controls my medicine reminder from last week's video. The medicine reminder is an input Boolean that's on a schedule using one of my favorite add-on nodes, the light scheduler node. Once the medicine reminder input Boolean kicks on, it starts this trigger node, which initially sends nothing. Then it waits 30 minutes before sending an actionable iOS notification. If at any time the input Boolean gets flipped off, usually by pressing the Amazon Dash button, it will reset the trigger node, preventing the notification from being sent. Let's talk a second about notifications. If you're on Android, there are a few different options for notifications like HTML5 and Push Billet. iOS, however, has an incredible Home Assistant app. It's honestly amazing, and it's free. 
I'm not a huge fan of Apple products and I would love to jump ship, especially after they failed to put out a reasonably sized phone with their last announcement, but the Home Assistant iOS app really keeps me from leaving. And one of the things that I like the most about it are the actionable notifications. Setting up actionable notifications can be a little tricky. I covered step-by-step -step instructions in my first Node-RED video, but the short version is that your iOS component defines different classes for notifications, which control which button press options you'll have for those notifications. The main identifier is used to send that specific notification class to your phone, and then the subsequent identifiers are the messages that will be sent to Home Assistant when you press those buttons on the notification. If you're going to play around with this, don't forget that you need to update the configuration, then reboot Home Assistant as usual, and then go to the iOS app and update your push notification settings. For Node Red, sending an actionable notification is as easy as correctly formatting your JSON for the data of your call services node. You can easily just use a YAML to JSON converter to do this if you already have actionable notifications set up in Home Assistant. But I've also included the specific JSON for my notifications in the description. Sending the message is relatively easy, but what about receiving the message? Most people interact with Home Assistant in Node Red by using the events state node, but an actionable notification doesn't come through as a state change. So we'll need to use the big, bad, scary events all node. This node basically outputs every single event that occurs in Home Assistant, and it does so as a JSON object. Whenever you're using this node, I highly recommend that you first pipe it into a debug node, and then hit the trash can icon in order to clear the debug window. Then perform whatever action you want to capture so that you can see what event data is generated in the debug window. When you click on the event, you'll see that there are a lot of different data fields. And the good news is that these data fields are really easy to read in Node Red. You can see that when I'm sending my medicine reminder notification, it has a field called payload, and then a subfield called event, and then another subfield called action name. And then in the action name, it sends the identifier from the iOS push notification. By setting up a switch node, we can filter out our events all messages for only the ones that have the specific action names that we want. Instead of just checking message.payload like we normally would in a switch node, you'll add a period for each subfield of the message. For instance, the actionable notification response can be read by examining message.payload.event dot action name. Once you've got the return message in Node Red, you can use it to do virtually anything. In my medication reminder automation, I can toggle an input boolean off, I can send another notification, or I can even hold on to that message until I return home. The events all node is extremely powerful because it gives you information about every single event that happens in Home Assistant. This video was specifically about using it to capture actionable notification responses, but if you've ever wanted to capture an obscure event from Home Assistant, this is how you do it. All the flows and configuration files that I've talked about in this video are down in the description. I do share all of my configuration.yaml file and all of my Node Red flows with my Patreon supporters. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, you can go ahead and check out my Patreon page or the other links in the description. I release a new home automation related video every Wednesday. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching the hookup.